Welcome! Today we are building another nightstand. This time with a spruce body, black inlets and also welded feet. As always, everything starts with rough cutting. Therefore, I took my table saw and also the rip fence. Since I want to have an exact right angle for the later gluing, I started by sawing off the round edges. After the edges are square and the boards are cut to width, I changed over to the crosscut sled to cut the boards to length. I use boards with a thickness of 10 mm and the dimensions are 300 by 300 mm. I want to use miter joints for gluing the frame, so I set the table saw to 45 degrees. The frame is made up by four boards, so I had to make eight cuts in total. As you can see, I have a lot more than four boards. That's because I'm building three of these nightstands at the same time. Unfortunately, my blade was a little bit dull. So I sanded the cut edges by hand. As there is an additional chamfer in the front, for design purpose, it was quite difficult for cutting. So I designed a second crosscut slat with clamp for easier fixing. As you probably saw in the beginning of the video, there are inlets in the outer frame and also in the box. So I adjusted my table saw to a depth of about 3mm and started cutting the grooves. Unfortunately, I don't have a data stack, so I had to adjust the parallel fans on and on. After the first groove is done, I continued with the second one, with the same procedure. Adjusting the fans over and over again until I reach the 8mm. If you have a router, you can also use a router for that job. And here you can see the perfect two grooves. For the inlets itself, I used the leftover wood from the pre-cutting. To get the perfect fit for the inlets, I cut them a little bit wider and adjusted everything by a little bit of sanding. To make it a little bit easier for me when gluing the inlets later, I decided to cut off the length of the inlets already now. It was time for glue up. I decided to use the blue tape method, or in my case the yellow tape method, and prepared everything. I added a little bit glue to the edges and clamped everything up with tape. You can also use clamps here, but I thought 
tape would work well enough. After letting the wood glue dry overnight, I was able to saw off the inlets for the perfect length. Due to the fact that I used mitre joints and also chamfer in the front, I had to sand some corners by hand. I finished up everything by sanding with the orbital sander and started from 100 crit until 220. For the drawers there are a variety of different boards. If you are interested in the exact dimensions you can take a look at the plans on my website. Attaching the drawer panels together, I decided I wanted to uh, use end rabbits, so I cut them on the table saw. You can also use a router if you have, or cut them by hand with the help of a chisel. For the bottom panel, I needed a little groove. After the first cut for the bottom panel, I had to adjust the fans again, due to the fact that I don't have a data stack. So the same with the frame, I had to adjust the fans again and again and cut the little groove. Like I said before, a router would be possible as well, or even a better solution. From previous projects, I had some 8mm MDF laying around, so I decided to use that for the button panel. I wanted the button panel to be black, so before attaching everything, I decided it would be a better idea to paint the panel first and then attach it to the drawer. For drawing the drawer itself, it was quite easy due to the use of rabbits. So I added a little bit glue to the end rabbits and attached everything with tape again. Unfortunately, the tape has not held tight enough, so the side parts have shifted slightly from bonding. The resulting small gap can be easily repaired with a little sawdust and wood glue. For sanding, I took my orbital to sander again, started with 100 grit and continued all the way up to 220 like I did it with the frame. The edges on the front panel were a little bit too small for my orbital sander, so I continued by hand. After everything was prepared, I started with the first paint job. The inlets had to be painted in black, and the frame and the drawing will get in clear coat. Since each inlet was different, I marked them with a number of the bottom, so I don't mix them up later on.
with a little bit of wood glue, I could insert the inlets perfectly into the grooves. Did the same thing with the frame and the boxes and I think the contrast between the black inlets and the spruce looks pretty good. Attaching drawer slides is actually quite easy. You disassemble the drawer slides, take a little spacer for the height and a little spacer for the front, mark the holes, pre-drill everything and you can attach the drawer slide with some screws. Take a right angle to check that they are also straight. Slide the inner part back in again and you are done. To attach the drawer slides to the box is as easy as that. Don't be confused that I do everything upside down. I use playing cards at Spacer and the front panel as a support. Be sure that the inner part of the drawer guide is completely against the end stop of the drawer. Then you can fix up everything with some screws and a screwdriver. For the knob in the middle of the front plate, I marked out the middle, drilled a small hole and fixed everything with a screw. Finishing up the frame and the boxes, I used some clear coat. First, I mask off all the drawer guides. Of course, you can also apply the drawer guides after the clear coat, but in my case, I choose this order. I did two coats on everything and in between I used the cleaning fees for roughing the surface. Let's continue with the feet. I used 20 by 20 millimeter scratch scoop for that. The different lengths you will need, you can find at the plants as well. As you can see, the project can also be done with hand tools. An angle grinder or a saw plate that can saw metal would of course be an advantage. A little bit of cutting fluid is always good. And I used a hand file for the edges. Make sure you're wearing eye protection. Having metal in your eye is never fun. For the assembly of the feet, I used welding magnets. They hold super tight. To measure the angles, I have taken a right angle for help. I really took my time for the angles, because the rule measure twice and weld once is really necessary in this step. I use pure flux cord welding, since I don't own any shield gas portal right now. This is a much dirtier welding process, but it holds just as well as in, and is equally fast. Only in the finishing process it takes much longer, because weld splutter flies around everywhere. Also use an exhaust system when welding, or if you don't have any, get yourself a proper protecting gas mask. For cleaning I used a simple angle grinder.
I also got rid of the welding spatter with sandpaper. For the feet itself, I used the same procedure. I used two magnets to hold the feet and spot welded them. I smoothed everything again with sandpaper and cleaned the surface from grease and dirt with isopropanol. Then it was time for the first step, primer. I made sure that I got all the corners and edges. Next step was paint. For this step I went outside, because the weather was really good and the temperature was perfect. It took me two steps to fully cover everything up. A better way for painting would be to hang the parts. Unfortunately I had no possibility for this, so I had to turn them around after a few hours of drying. Fortunately I forgot to weld the end caps as well. Therefore I had decided to print end caps paint them in the same color as the frame and insert them into the frame later on. Last but not least, I need some holes for the screws to connect the feet to the frame. So I center punched everything. Pre-tilt everything with a small drill. And continued with a bigger one for the screw head. For the edges I used a universal debarring tool. And because I had time, I took a few slow motion videos. It was time for the last step. I put the feet assembly on the bottom of the nightstand and attached it with some screws. Added a 3D printed end caps and it was done. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you liked the video, then I would be happy about a subscription. Also, of course, I'm always happy about your opinion in the comments and a like. You also were welcome to share the video with your friends and colleagues. You can find a detailed guide with over 30 pages and step-by-step -step instructions to build your own nightstand on my homepage tooltechbase.com. Or join me on Instagram for sneak previews for upcoming projects. Until then, I see you next time.